This week on the Harris Highlights Podcast, the crew heads to Tucson and catches a selfie with one of the nation's best wide receivers. We give our Big Ten rankings, and the Heisman frontrunner likes our tweet mid-show. All this and more on the Harris Highlights Show. Coming to you live from Arizona State in downtown Phoenix, this is the Harris Highlights Podcast, episode number four. Now, gentlemen, we are in a brand new, spanking nice location. How do you like this new studio we got here? It's fine. It's more private, sensual location. I love it. Not gonna lie, I miss the old one. I miss the because you can't easily around this one. I, I like the new one personally. Now, why does it seem like <laughs> every time? We're about to crack the top 25. <laughs> we completely blow it. This, uh, two week, what was it? Two weeks ago, we were ranked number 26 with a win. Puts us in the 25. We lose to SC. This week, we're ranked 27, and we lose to Colorado. Is this some curse yes. where we're going to get close every week, and then we're just going to get screwed over? Let's just say each time Arizona State has an away game, close your eyes. Oh, God, yeah. that's. We got a home game this week. Yeah. Woo! Homecoming. Homecoming. So we have that going for us. But well, that's our Hey, team. positivity. Well, unfortunately, the top 25 does not include Arizona State, but it does include some, some uh, new teams in here. Guys, um, earlier in the week I told you to give me three teams you feel are pretty much overranked in the top 25. Who, who's getting too much love? I'm going to go first with this one. Uh, I'm just going to list all three of them. I have Ole Miss. Mm-hmm. They don't even deserve to be up there. They're 3-3. Three and three. They're ranked 23rd. Agreed. They don't, be- they don't deserve to be there. Uh, I'm going to throw LSU in that mix as well because they really haven't showed a whole lot. Um, Leonard Fournette's been out the last two weeks. He's most likely going to play this week. Uh, they're 4-2. and two. They're ranked 25th, but I, I still don't I'm not a big fan of them. And I think Oklahoma's overranked as well. They uh, definitely deserve to be in the top 25, but not as high as 16. I got one pretty obvious one. Boise State. They're at, what, 14 now? Yeah. Again, who have they played? How are they at 14 when they've played absolutely nobody? They have no marquee wins on their schedule. It well, makes no sense to me if, at all. If we can add up, of course, you guys aren't going to like what I'm saying because I said this before. I do agree that Boise State is a little bit too high, but I am going to play devil's advocate. I'm not saying I disagree with you, but I am going to play devil's advocate and say that they are 6-0. and And for the first, what was it, four or five weeks of the season, Washington was at 4-5, and five and they hadn't played anyone either. So clearly Washington has proven that they're a top-five team, but I'm just playing devil's advocate and saying that Western Michigan's 7-0 and and they're ranked 20th. And with Boise State being 6-0 and and ranked 14th, then... You know, it's just to put it in perspective a little bit. See, I mean, I like the Boise State love. Um, they are undefeated, but I just got up their schedule really quick. Yeah. UL Lafayette, Washington State, one by three. At Oregon State, one by two touchdowns. Utah State, one by 11. At New Mexico, which they pretty much ran away with. And then Colorado State, one by five. So all these games have been fairly close. I mean, they've been dominant against the teams they have not played. A good game tomorrow oh, against yeah. BYU, which will be a good test. Because I, was, um, I saw yeah. some stat... BYU is 4-3. and three. Everyone make a guess right now how many points they've lost by a combined total of in their three losses. Ten. Eight. I'm going to say five. Twelve. Those are all very good guesses. Seven points. Whoa. So three losses by a combined total of seven. So BYU is a very good team, and I think tomorrow they can potentially take down Boise State. But that's just my Boise State comment. Despite the fact that Arkansas is 5-2, and two, there are 5-2 and two teams that are not ranked that I think the are, Sun Devils <laughs> that I think are, are, are leaps and bounds better than, than Arkansas yeah they've been impressive but you know I just putting them at 17 it isn't it's not a bad ranking for a 5-2 and two team I'm just not that big of a fan of the way that they play their ball and I just haven't been too impressed with the Razorbacks not gonna lie I think you guys might disagree with me on this one but Shocker. I'm, I'm gonna say Wisconsin Wisconsin mm. at 10 you see, their top 10 team with two losses, I don't like that. I mean, there's a lot 
on better teams, I'm going to say maybe Houston, maybe someone else. But with a two-loss team being in the top ten, to me, that doesn't exactly make sense to me. I'm not buying that. I mean, like, once they get – the two losses have come from good teams, and that's true. I do agree on that. But overall, a two-loss team in the top ten? Mm-hmm. Eh. I'm sort of with you on that one because my next team that I had was Florida State, who's a two-loss team, and they're at, I think, uh, 13, 13 right? now. Yeah. And to be honest, I think the only reason they're even there is to make this Clemson game on Saturday look like a better game because yeah. a one-point win over Miami, you know, uh, you only beat Wake Forest sad. by what eleven. And since that, uh, since that Ole Miss game, who you know is my third team and also hasn't been very good, they just haven't been that impressive. Their one tough game this year, Louisville, they got absolutely ran over. Like, you know, to be at fourteen for that, I think is a little high. But I also asked to name. Um this was, this was tough. I said, give me three teams you feel are not receiving enough love. I know Lyle was struggling. I was struggling to get teams that don't have any love, so you guys can just name me one. But is there any team that you guys pretty much have your eye on that's not getting? Okay, Brady, aside from Indiana. No, I didn't. <laughs> I don't even have IU in that top three. Who, who do you feel is not getting enough Chattanooga, love? Chattanooga, obviously. Well, yeah. Oh, sorry. Well, besides, besides them... Um, also, I just want to say Chattanooga did suffer their first loss this week. Oh, no. They, they were they undefeated. Are human. They, Season's over. They are so human. That did break my heart that they are a good team. But who is the one team that's... I actually have... I have three. I came up with three. I think one of them is right where they should be. Um, Tennessee. Okay, I have them being underranked. They're 18th right now at 5-2. And, and then also another 5-2 and two team are the Tar Heels of North Carolina. I think North Carolina, ranked 22nd right now, should be higher. They've had some really good wins. and See, I, I was think just going to say that. I think they're, they should be a higher-ranked team, at least in the top 20. I'm going to agree with you on that one. I was just going to say North Carolina would be my underranked team. The only misgiving that I have about the Tar Heels is the fact that they pretty much got smacked by the Hokies. I was going to say the same so, thing. So, yeah, I, I could tell Lyle was going to say the same thing. That's why I wanted to bring it up. But there are a lot of teams that aren't ranked as well, but I'm not saying they should be top 20, not top 15. But there are some unranked teams that I think are pretty impressive, the top two being Colorado. Colorado and Miami. I've also been impressed with Oklahoma State. You want to see the Sun Devils up there, but um, I also like the way that USC is playing now, but I think definitely out of the two teams that aren't ranked, I would have to say Colorado and Miami. Maybe Colorado falling out a little bit, but definitely the the Hurricanes. My one, and it's a little bit of like a unorthodox one, but I have A&M at six. I think it's a little too low for them. I mean, okay, I know they're six and oh. I know everyone ahead of them is also undefeated. But, like, Clemson's still at four when they should have lost on Saturday. Yeah. That NC, that, uh, NC State kicker makes his field goal. They drop. So I don't think they should stay at four for that win. I think A&M should have absolutely jumped him over after uh, beating Tennessee. Well, speaking of Clemson almost losing, let's transition into our new top four. Um, I mean, I don't know what your guys look like, but mine kind of shook up this past week. Uh, so who wants to go with theirs this week, Josh? So I'm going to go first, and I, I had mine set. But after what Lyle just said, it really made me think, and this was something I'd been going back and forth with for, for a few days now. So going from four down to one, my new number four is actually a and wow. So So no UW and no Clemson this week. Uh, at number three, I have Ohio State. At number two, I have Michigan. I do like the way that Michigan's playing. And then at number one, no surprises, 7-0 and Alabama, you know, I'm not a big fan of watching Tide football. I, if I see them on TV, I'm probably not going to watch them unless it's a big game. But they are, without a doubt, the best team in the country. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm going to go Alabama at number one. I like Ohio State at two. The t- my top three is the AP Pulse top three. Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan. And I think A&M is actually four. Wow. Wow. Two shockers. I was not expecting those. So you're saying two SEC teams and two Big Ten teams. Yeah. Yes. Which is the way wow. it should be because that would be – Fantastic. That would be Don't get me wrong. I, I think I can speak for Brady saying this, too. I like the way Clemson's playing. Yep. Nothing against them. They've fallen off a little bit lately, but nothing against Clemson and nothing against UW. I think UW's going to have a tough couple of games coming up. I think ASU might give them some trouble. I think their, their biggest challenge going to be this year is USC because they're finally playing well. But I think Washington has a little bit of a tough road ahead, and we can see them either really step up and shine or see that they're, they might not be as good as everyone thinks they are. But I'm just a lot more impressed with A&M currently than I am with the Huskies or the Tigers. And going on to that Clemson point, they they have fallen off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I think one of the big things is, and we talked about this in, I think, the first and second episode uh, of the series, was the amount of primetime games and views that your team gets. Yeah. So they had their first, I think, three games were all primetime or big TV games, where now they're playing it 
one o'clock noon. They're playing some smaller, not primetime games. So that that's I think why I have them dropping out. And to be honest, they haven't been so stellar all year. I mean, they're still undefeated, but they almost lost to Troy. They now should have lost that NC State game. Hey, really but, quick though, to put on Troy, I was looking at the teams receiving votes. Troy got a vote Troy this, got a weekend. Vote this week. So I'm uh, some respect to Troy. Okay, if they can get a vote, then they're obviously a good team. In just, the USA Today poll, they got ten. They got, okay, so they Troy is 10. not a Troy. Tulsa and BYU each got one, and Appalachian State got two. I still though, if you're yeah, Clemson, <laughs> Clemson's, Clemson's not what they were last year. But anyway, uh, my top four is like Brady. It's, it, I now have Bama at one. I, they've now impressed me enough to you know just give them the edge over Ohio State for now. I mean, not to take anything away from either team. They're both stellar. And then, yeah, Ohio State at two. Pretty impressive win in overtime against Wisconsin on Saturday. I still have UW at three. I still think that they're, you know, until they prove me wrong, they're deserving of the spot. And then Michigan just cracked my top four at four this week. Uh, you know, they've dominated in five of their six games so far this season. They got a big win against Wisconsin as well. And I, I really like a and I think they're they're a great team, but they just missed my top four. I like Michigan just a little bit more. So sorry, reiterate for me. So, so five and six would be Clemson and A&M? I would go A&M at five, Clemson at six. Okay. Right Spencer? I mean, to me, there's no question at number one. Never was for me. So that's going to be Alabama. Then number two is Ohio State. Three... I'm finally respecting Michigan. I don't know how it's going to work with the last game of the season, how they play each other yeah. out. Yeah. But that is going to be a. Woo-hoo. To me, that's why you can't have two teams from the same conference. Well, they, I mean, like I, I said, I think you kind of have to, though, it, at this point. I don't know. Cle- well, that, well, that, I do agree with you. Clemson look a bit shaky. They are looking a bit they shaky. shaky all year. However, yes. if, Cle- if Clemson keeps playing well and if A&M keeps playing well, it all comes down to, I think, that last game. If Say if Michigan and Ohio State both. Are, are undefeated come their last game. Yes, I think if one of those teams loses, there's still a chance that they can get into the playoff if they if that team that wins goes on and wins the cha- wins yes. the conference championship. The, whoever loses that game, I still think has a chance to get in. Only but if say, it's a close game. Yes, only if, if it's, it's a close game, game. If it's a good game, if it's in, if it's a blowout, no chance. I don't think it will be a blowout though. However, that game could. If both of those teams are undefeated, and someone's going to win that game, obviously, that means that if Clemson's still playing well, and if A&M is still playing well, then that opens the door for one of them to kind of back their way in. And then for my, so it would be Alabama, Ohio State, Michigan for three, and then Washington above Clemson for my four spot. Okay. I like this four. I like how you guys were talking about how you guys are going to have two SEC teams and uh, two Big Ten teams, but... I don't know if they're going to have two SEC teams, to be honest. I think they're just going to have one. To be honest, because, I like I said, happen. I don't think there's going to be two SEC teams. There's going to be one, and it's not going to be Bama. Because oh, for the hundredth oh. time, don't sleep oh on God. Chattanooga. I'm telling you. I was looking up their schedule. They're, they're outscoring opponents by, like, 300 points this year. Well, like, how, how many – okay, so I'm going to sidestep this just a little bit. How many undefeated teams are going to be in the playoff this year? Two. Two. Two? Two. I'm, I'm okay. going with one because at this point in the season, it's halfway through the year. There's still a handful of undefeated teams. Somebody always loses. Somebody I'm, always gets upset. It I'm going to say happens. one, too. I'm going to say there's going to be one undefeated team. So what are the chances that a two-loss team gets in? At this point, with the way that the top, say, six or seven teams are sitting right now, is there a chance for a two-loss team to get into the college football playoff? Um, I, say, I say no. Unlikely. No. Do you guys think that a team who doesn't finish first in their division, could, or in their conference, can make to the playoffs? Yeah. In the Big Ten? Yeah. Big Ten SEC. As Ricky Bobby said, if you ain't first or last. Really quickly, though, I just wanted to talk about these uh, blowouts. 66 to nothing. For 30, Chattanooga. 34 to nothing. 41 to 21, 37 to 7, and 52 to 31. You didn't tell us who they were playing. Well, I mean, dude, I mean, obviously they're going against powerhouses like uh, Presbyterian, uh, Shorter. Who is this? Uh, Ch- Chattanooga. I mean, Furman. E- dude, ETSU. I'm just saying. I'm telling dude, you. No way. If Zane uh, and extra the entire Chattanooga Southern team showed up at your house, how happy would you be? Oh, I'd be very happy. But really quick, because um, I just want to give my top four. I think it's the exact same as Spencer's. Um, I have Bama at one, Ohio State at two, Michigan at three, and Washington at four. I do love, though, your A&M picks yeah. because that's uh, they've looked really good this year. They've played really good teams. That A&M-Bama game is going to be very interesting. Um, it's I want to say it's a – is it a Kyle Field? 
Or is it in Tuscaloosa this week? The A&M Bama game. Uh, I guess we'll, we'll get more of that. It's in Alabama. It's in Alabama. Mm. I'll get yeah, it. yeah, it's in Tuscaloosa. Oh, like I said, we'll talk more about that in the end. But I think A&M is going to be... And that's been like a really popular comment also that we've been getting is that most people think that A&M is the team that takes down Bama, which I completely agree with. I think if anyone's going to beat Bama, it's going to be Texas A&M. But like I said, we'll talk more about that game later in the show. Then again, you do have rivalry games at the end of the year. I mean, there's a lot of... Rivalries That's true, but I mean, at least for, small rivalries. for Anything Auburn, can happen, or I mean, no. for Alabama though, I don't think anyone can take yeah, him down. I, I agree. Um, really quick now, also, let's before we get into the main things of the show, quickly let's get to our Heisman watch because, oh, I'm excited for mine because I know I have a player in my top five that is guaranteed not to be in any of yours. Like I'm excited about this. So who wants to lead it off? I was gonna say Zane Gonzalez, but I was gonna say Zane as well. All right. I mean, he's number one in all of ours, but. <laughs> Come all right. on. Cracking my top five for the first time this season at five, Seth Russell from Baylor, who's I love it. I like it. I I love it. Not in mine, but I like it. Who's really had a great year and has not gotten love from anybody. I mean, but when you look at his numbers, he had. Mm. I I mean, what was it in the first half uh, on on Saturday? I think is I think he had. Four or five touchdowns just in the first half. I mean, he was playing Kansas, so let's not get ahead of ourselves. He had four or five, but then he got pulled. So, okay, but anyway, uh, enough about Seth Russell. Four, I've got Jake Browning, who's, you know, well-deserving of the spot, really led the Huskies this season. Yes, sir. Still got Trevor Knight at three. Really like him a lot. Mm -hmm. Had him as my sleeper week one, and he's proven that he's the real deal. Number two, I had Lamar slip this week to number two. after not play as well as he should have. Uh, I think this that's just some uh, Duke hate from uh, Lyle over here. <laughs> yeah. Some, uh, didn't go look up his number. Would you like some pepper with your salt, Lyle? Ooh. Ooh. Okay. okay, I'm just messing with you. Did not have a good week. I, I respect that call. Numbers. And then number one, it's J T Barrett. After he really, you know, led Ohio State that tough, tough game against Wisconsin, and yeah. you know he took him to a victory. He had a really nice game. I think he. I respect you know, that. Just, like, just beats out Lamar this week. In my Heisman watch. Gentlemen? Should I follow that up? Go ahead. Go right I'm going to follow that up. Uh, okay, so at five, there are two players that I, at the moment, I'm questioning. And it's because I don't know if they should be in or I don't know if they should not be in. So at five, I'm going to give a t- I'm going to say it's a tie between Jabril Peppers and Jake Browning. That's going to be my tie at five because... I'm just not totally sure. I don't think either of them are even close to being the best player in the country and a player that changes the way that their team plays football. But I'm going to throw them in there just because they're both very talented and they're playing well. At four, I have Deshaun Watson. I did have Clemson drop out of my top four this week, but I still think Deshaun Watson's one of the best quarterbacks in the country. At three, moving up in my list, is TK, Trevor Knight. I like the way he's playing. I like the way the team's playing. At two and one, I have no change. Two, JT Barrett. Uh, Ohio State's still looking very impressive, led by JT. And uh, great first two initials, by the way. Um, (laughs) uh, Those are mine. Um, (laughs) Middle name and first name. Um, Anyways, last, Lamar Jackson. No question, unless you're Lyle, no question, Lamar Jackson. Um, For me, I think he's the best player in the country. And I think if you take him off that Louisville team, that team's not a top ten team. They're not even in the playoff. True that. Contention. So. So my top five. I'm Six. gonna go next. So at number five, <laughs> I'm gonna steal Lyle's pick. I'm gonna say Seth Russell. Giving that man no love. I think you should finally get some love. Baylor's playing well. Baylor's actually playing super well. Number four, I'm gonna say Deshaun Watson. Playing well, great quarterback, keeps on doing what he's doing, keeps on winning football games, should be up there automatically. Number three, probably Jake Browning. No reason for him to fall. Leading Washington so far. Next is JT Barrett, of course, and of course, Lamar Jackson. My number five is going to be Jake Browning. I think mine's the same top five as I had last week. Uh, Jake Browning at five, the great Jabril Peppers at four. I think what he's doing on both sides of the ball it is the most recent player I can remember or even re- going back and rewatching play this well on both sides of the ball is Deion Sanders. Really? That he, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Deshaun Watson at three, JT Barrett at dose, and numero uno is Lamar Jackson. 
Oh, that's some intermediate Spanish level right there. I'm Muchas ready. gracias, ah, amigo. Muchos okay. run. Before, <laughs> before Blake gives us his top five, I'm just going to say, Lamar threw for 181 yards on Saturday. That's not, I mean, and one touchdown. That's not that impressive. Okay, he ran for another 145. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. But this is also Duke. Like, he should be, you know, A beating cool. those guys. Th- Duke yeah. beat Notre Dame, Lyle. You're wearing a Notre Dame shirt. And Notre Dame's terrible this year. <laughs> <laughs> so All right, point. so I'm going to get to my top five right now. At number five, I have Deshaun Watson. Um, that game against NC State. Oh, I, th- I mean, I think NC State's a good team, so I mean, nothing against them. But I have him slipping at number five. Remember no- when NC State beat a... <laughs> Remember when I was the only one that picked NC State to win? Fair point. <sighs> <sighs> oh, he did. Yeah, did, oh, yeah. Great. High, five, high five. Boom. All right, at number four, I have I a Jake Browning. And now is when I'm excited because at my number three, one player who is not even I, I'm pretty sure we have not mentioned his name in the Say four it. episodes of this entire show. Jalen Hurts. Ooh. Quarterback oh, out of man. Alabama. How how is it? Like it, it, he's getting no love in any of the Heisman productions. That's I mean, he's that's a true a freshman point. that's completely leading this Alabama team to victory. I'm gonna go over his stats really quick. Um You're gonna put four, him at three? What? You're going to put him at three? Three, at three. Really? He has, he has 1,400 passing yards, nine touchdowns, 430 rushing yards, and eight rushing touchdowns. Can you say what his passing yards again was? 1,400. So 1,400, nine touchdowns, 400 rushing yards, eight rushing touchdowns. How is it this guy's not getting any love? Because well, I, I know I caught you guys off guard with that pick, right? I don't, I don't think that he's not getting any love, per se. I just don't think that he's being talked about in the Heisman contention because, put it plain and simple, He's a very talented player. He's very entertaining to watch. However, I don't think he is more important to a football team than these other players are. Because if you take Jalen Hurts off of the Crimson Tide roster, that team is still stacked. <laughs> they are still three deep at least at every position. Every position. Bama's never like built around its quarterback. That's just how they are. They have so much talent everywhere else. They were built on the great Trent anybody. Richardson a couple years ago. Mm. He was great at Bama. He was great at Bama. Great draft. Throwing the NFL, like, holy hell. Draft. Like, like I said, I keep talking about, the, uh, about those like five or six white-collar teams, and I don't think you ever really see a team like that that's completely built around the team's quarterback. But right now, I think it's starting to look like Ohio State is one of those teams that's starting to build around the quarterback, I think. Yeah. All right, well... I, 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 I know, I like it. I love my pick. I like it. it did call me, uh, uh, catch me off guard. <laughs> Take two, Lyle. Call me off guard. I just disagree. Uh, number two, I got JT Barrett. And number one, not moving at all this week, Zane Gonzalez, kicker, Arizona State. I was doing my research this week. I was standing right next to Zane Gonzalez today. I know, wrong. Hang on, I'll do the honors. He's a beautiful man. I'll do it. Do it for me, Lyle. I'll do the honors. Right after practice. Oh. Um, so I was, I was looking at those legs, though. He's a kicker. He couldn't be sweating that much. <laughs> hey, which is, anyway. He was on the first, he was on the first was, golf cart bag. <laughs> oh, God. I was looking up stats, and uh, Zane Gonzalez is the third leading scorer in the country. He has 82 points. Lamar Jackson is 90. And then number two is uh, Jeremy McNichols of Boise State, and he has 84. So this guy is eight points away Holy from Lamar. <laughs> he is eight points away from Lamar Jackson, guys. Now, wait. Now, correct me if I'm wrong. You're probably We are. were in the car, and... Come on, you were there too. We were in the car last week. I want confirmation, even though I'm pretty sure I'm right. We're driving back from Tucson, and we're listening to the Arizona State game, I say in quotes, because um, it wasn't a game. Despite being in Colorado with the low or the high altitude, Zane Gonzalez hits a 59-yard field goal that the commentator's state would have been good from 70. I, uh, I When I made this joke a minute ago, but when I was actually standing next to Zane earlier today, he was talking to Tim Healy who's the radio play-by-play voice right. for the Sun Devils. And he asked him about the field goals. And he's like, how far do you think he could have made it? And he said, at least 65. Yeah, he's something else. I, I mean, I don't think he's going to win the Heisman personally, but I think he's going to run away with the... Get out of here! Leave run. the room! All right, bye. Um, he he's going to run away with the gross head. He has six 50-plus yard field goals. The next closest in the country only has two. Jeez. And um, as Brady mentioned, he had a 59-yarder, and he had at least... Or maybe it was Josh, I, I already forgot... He had at least another 10 yards in that thing. So I think could have gone, I think, for 70 yards. But um, it's good to see, though, because also in all the comments and everything now, Zane, Re- Zane Gonzalez is getting the recognition he deserves because we truly are witnessing greatness. He is the greatest kicker in college football. History. and, and Oh, did I say history wrong? The greatest kicker in college football history. 
And all I know is next year for fantasy, he's going to be my number one overall <laughs> pick. You guys can take whoever you want, but he's my number one pick. Not if I pick before you. Yeah, I'll we'll probably still that. be able to beat you. Yeah, yeah we'll see about Psych. that. But um, really quickly, just to lend it out, um, I'm keeping Lamar Jackson at number one because I honestly feel oh, yeah, until he this. screws up, like, okay, his Duke game wasn't that great, but I feel like until he screws up, he it's his, it's his to lose. Really quick, it's though, to everyone out there listening, we need to get Zane Gonzalez to know about this show. So right now, if you have a Twitter, go find him on Twitter. Tag him in the URL to this show because we need Zane. If we can get Zane Gonzalez on the show, my goodness, gentlemen. I will work on this for you. I will try to get this. Do it, I will Brady. Get Zane. Get Hi, Zane. Zane. Get but Zane. Also, to, also to all the fans out there, though. Zaniacs? Just tag him out there. Go show him some love. Send him a nice tweet. Because he needs all the love he can get, because he is deserving of it, because he is our MVP. Before we get to our big, before we get to our Big Ten rankings, uh, the four of us made a little uh, road trip this weekend. Sorry, Spencer. Uh, uh, yeah. We traveled to Tucson to see. I had the, fun in Tempe. Yeah, really ah! We went to the U of A USC game, all for different and special reasons. Josh, why were you at the game? I was at the game because I got hired by the Trojan Football Radio Network to work as their spotter. And that was a crazy experience because their play-by-play guy is one of my biggest broadcasting idols, and I've been listening to that crew since I was probably seven years old. Now, this was very, very cool as well because the reason I went, because, I mean, also I'm a USC fan, so I probably would have gone to this game anyway. But um, I want to give a huge shout-out right now to Paul McGlure. He probably is listening because I told him to, (laughs) but um, we'll see. Paul McGlure, linebacker for University of Arizona. Um, I made a highlight video from him last year. And we've remained in touch ever since. He's one of the nicest guys. I mean, this guy, out of all the guys I made highlight videos for, is without a doubt the best guy. Usually, you know, I'll talk with him for a few days, make the tape, and I never hear from him again. This guy, he'll text me on a random day saying, hey, how's school going? Hey, how you doing? All this kind of stuff. What a wonderful guy. So um, at the beginning of the year, because he is a senior, this is his last season, he really wanted me to see a game live. But being at ASU, that's too tough. So about a week ago, I said, hey, you know what? It looks like I might be coming out for that U of A USC game. And he goes, I got you, my man. He says, how many tickets do you need? I'm like, oh. So I say, hey, Lyle, what are you doing this weekend? We have a little bro date. And he gave us two tickets. But um, Paul McGlure is a great guy. Time? Everyone, please go fo- um, show him some love on Twitter, Instagram. Tell me if I'm wrong, but he texted you after the game, despite losing, yeah. and said, thank you so much for coming. I appreciate yeah, that, it. Yeah, that's the thing as well. So it was a complete blowout. And I wasn't even going to send him a text. Like, I was scared to send him a text saying, hey, good game, bud, when they lost by 30 and I didn't want to do anything. And about, I think it was 30, 45 minutes after the game, he texted me saying, hey, man, thank you so much for coming out. It means a lot. Um, sorry we couldn't meet up right now. Um, but for the ASU U of A game, we'll meet up and I'll see you. And just like right, right off the bat, I wouldn't have sent a text if I lost by 30. So that, that just shows what a great guy he is. So, Paul, if you are listening... Just thank you so much. Um, we're all thankful. My family's thankful. All the Harris Highlight fans are thankful. You're the best, and keep it up. Other than Blake inviting me to the game, the real reason I was there is so after the game, I could just stare at my childhood idol, Brady Quinn, walk oh, yes. right by me oh, and could. say nothing. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, can I please tell the story? Can I please tell the story? As long as I get one next. So we're, we're waiting there after the game, waiting for Josh, who, by the way, took like 45 minutes to come down from the damn booth. Hey, they anyway, banged me on the pregame show. I had to get it on Snapchat. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> so we knew that, um, so Joe Davis and Brady Quinn were calling the game, so we knew that they were going to be coming down, and we see Brady Quinn and Joe Davis from about 50 yards out, and Brady's just going, Lyle, Lyle, come here, come here. This, this Brady, not so, Brady Quinn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we're, Brady Quinn's like, hey, Lyle, So we see him walking towards us, and we're about maybe five feet or so from them. Joe Davis walks by, and I make a, because he's the Dodgers commentator, so I make a comment about the Dodgers, and he acknowledges me, and we discuss for about a quick five seconds as he walks by, and here comes Brady Quinn, Lyle childhood idol the guy he's looked up to the guy like if literally lyle could meet anyone in the world it'd be brady quinn eh, maybe, but and he was my first brady quinn player. just walks right on by and lyle was silent <laughs> i mean it, i i've never seen i mean it was, uh, lyle man what happened bud what happened man talk to us i was in awe i don't know he was in awe that was ah uh, but another very cool thing um so lyle couldn't meet brady quinn but there is someone that we all did meet, Juju Smith Schuster, uh, probably yeah. the probably the best receiver in the country, probably without a doubt the number one wide receiver in the country. And how nice was this guy? 
He, so first of all, he came out and he took photos for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I guess the media found him and swarmed him. This one dude was asking him questions for, what is it, 15, 20 minutes, guys? Yeah, that dude wouldn't yeah. shut up. He would not shut up about the questions, but Juju kept going. And you I'm like, who you are. so pretty much every USC player had left by now. And there was Juju and a few other players. He turns around and he's still taking photos. And I, I whip out my phone to take a selfie and the lighting is terrible. Like the lighting is terrible. I'm like, okay, can we move? And he's like, man, let's go over here. So we move like 15 feet and we Wait, take really? a selfie. Yeah. I don't know the story. Yeah, because well, you, we <laughs> you weren't there. You weren't there, bud. Why, why don't you tell everybody what you said to him after you took the oh, picture? Oh, and uh, so I, I don't know how many guys, have, that new Juju on that beat craze has been going Juju on. Juju on that beat? But he posted um, a video like a few days prior from doing it. So I was like, hey, Juju. And he's like, yeah. And I'm like, Juju on that beat? And he just goes, oh, man. He just like looked embarrassed. But very cool getting to meet Juju Smith. Um, very nice guy. And uh, we also met a few. We met Zach Banner. We did, Zach Banner. Um, Darnold was next to us. We didn't say anything to him, though. But that was that was very cool. Yeah, so I'll add on and say um, I, I had met Juju before. I had met Adoree Jackson before. I, I had met a lot of the the current SC players before. And I, I, will, I will tell you right now, with any college football player that I have met while they're still in college, USC, UCLA, primarily those two are the two schools where I've met multiple players before. I've never had a bad experience with them. <laughs> sorry, moving on. So. I heard their student section, though. Was, oh, yeah, uh, their students. Okay, sorry, we're calling uh, you out right now. That was one of the most embarrassing things I've ever seen in my entire life. U of A, show up to football games, please. That was embarrassing. Yeah, that was a... They're a basketball school. Yeah, that's true, that's true. But I'm uh, moving... That was it was a great day, great overall, great overall experience. But um, last week we did our Pac-12 rankings, which got a very positive response from, and a lot of people were voicing their opinions on what um, conference they wanted to hear from next. A lot of SEC, a lot of American A-C- conference, A-C-C. a lot of ACC, but the most requested one was the Big 12. Big or a Big 12, Big <laughs> 10. Oh, I messed that Way up. Way to set that up and All right. just fall right down. All right, guys, <laughs> minus one for me. Big 10, there's actually 14 teams in the Big 10, so it's going to take a little a little longer this week. <laughs> this is what's going to happen, guys. Give your 14 through 8, no explanation or anything, just 14 through 8, and then we'll all discuss for about a minute or two why we rank those teams where. Right. And then we'll do 7, 6, 5, and then we'll do our top four. All right, so uh, Brady, do you do you want to start it I'll off? I'll start this, week? this one off. Oh, beautiful. Um, I'm gonna go 14 through eight, just like you asked, Blake. Thanks. Hey, you're welcome. Number 14, Rutgers, two and five, they blow. Uh, <laughs> number 13, Illinois, two and four. Number 12, Purdue. They just fired their amazing head coach, who was nine and 33 over the past mm, three seasons. Yikes! Success. What a what a High record, Daryl Hazel. Um, they're 12. Michigan State at 11. Minnesota at 10. Northwestern at 9, and Maryland at 8. All right, Josh, you had your hand up. So I'm going to take this away. Like I said, not a really big fan of somebody in the Big Ten other than Maryland and Nebraska, but I love watching them. So, Blake, 14 through 8. At 14, I have Rutgers. As Brady said, they are, what, 2 and 4? Yeah, 2, two and, and five. 5. Yeah, but two they're, and five. they're two and five. ugly 2 and 5. 2 and 5. They look good losing, though. Their uniforms are great. True. At 13, I have Illinois. At 12, I have Purdue. At 11, I have Sparty. At 10, I have Northwestern. At 9, sorry, Brady, I have Indiana. And at 8, just barely on the outside because of two losses to two other Big Ten teams, I have the Maryland Terrapins. Lyle? Okay, I've got Rutgers at 14. Yeah, they're a joke. Um, <laughs> not a very good one either. Not much to say there. <laughs> High Il- five. Dad yeah. joke. <laughs> yeah, and then I got Illinois at 13, Michigan State at 12, Purdue at 11, Minnesota at 10, Maryland at 9, and Northwestern at 8. Spencey? I'm going to start off with... Uh, <laughs> That's uh, minus two for you, Blake. Oh, damn it. Two so more. I'll start off with the Rutgers. They're they're a bad team, as everyone says they are. Then U of I. Shout out to everyone in Champaign back home who I know goes there. Oh, God. <laughs> they wave, couldn't see your wave. <laughs> yes, as I wave on to them. I'm going to say Michigan State next. It's weird saying Michigan State so low. Yeah. But with a 2-4 and four record, not impressed. Not a good season for them. Next, I'll say Purdue. And then I'll say... Indiana, and then Minnesota. Man, these Hoosiers are just not getting any love. Don't worry, Brady. You won't find them on this section of my list. 14, I got Rutgers. 13, Illinois. 12, Michigan State. 11, Northwestern. 10, Purdue. 9, Minnesota. And 8, Maryland. Now, really quick, out of these, I mean, what was it, 8 through 14, I don't think any of us know really enough Big Ten to talk about these teams, but Michigan State... What what is Big Ten's my to conference? Them? I could talk Big Ten all day. Oh, I, I know you could. Well, but but 
Michigan State. Michigan State, what is... Michigan State has... We'll get to that in the Q&A because there's a really good Q&A question about Michigan State. All right, so very far. quickly. They have, for those that don't know, they have two wins. A nice 15-point win over Furman and a very nice win over my Notre Dame not-so-fighting Irish. <laughs> so oh, far. I love it. The record is 2-4 and four and 0-3 oh and three in conference, just for a reminder. Yeah. All right, guys, let's hear your 7, 6, and 5. All right, my 7 is going to be Penn State. 6... The glory of old IU, Indiana Hoosiers at uh, six, and then Iowa at five. Okay. So uh, at seven, I have Minnesota, and at six, I have Penn State. Uh, I think Maryland's been playing better, but the reason I have Maryland at eight and then Penn State and Minnesota ahead of them at seven and six is because they both beat Maryland. Um, anyway, five, I have Iowa. Kind of on the outside, still a good football team. At four, no, I have no, 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 no. Once again, you're not following instructions. I'm sorry. Wait, well, what was it? Seven, six, and five, Josh. Big silly. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. You just... you Trying to get ahead of yourself. Now. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Lying. Spoilers. I mean, who's at four? I don't even. I didn't say anything. Lyle, Rewind. Lyle, let's go. <laughs> All right, I've got um, Penn State at seven, Iowa at six, and then Indiana at five. All right. Well, I know Brady likes that. All right, Brady. I didn't even have them that high. I already went. Oh, man. All right, so I'm I'll impressed. go. <laughs> I'll go. Yeah, where, is, it, is it the room or something that's just making us So I'll just go things? with seven yes. with Northwestern, six with Maryland. To me, it's all about the overall record with the four and two. And then after that, it's going to be Penn State. See, the thing I love about this is all of our rankings have been completely different. Like, I think the only ones we agreed on were Rutgers and Illinois, but other than that, they've all been completely different. It's all about the swish different. up. At number seven, I'm going to go with Iowa. At number six, some love to IU right there. And at number five, Penn State, who I think is on the come up. Penn State, guys, the last few years, I mean, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't go, go anywhere near their showers. But <laughs> they have... <laughs> I was going to make that joke, but decided not to. Uh, they have looked good recently, especially this season. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think they only have two losses? If I can get a fact checker on that in yes, the next you minute, are correct, that'd be you great. Are correct, you are correct. But, uh, uh, two, wrong, lo- two losses and a wrong, throw in the ass. Wrong. You're right, but you're still wrong. Anyway. You, but everything you say is lying. All right, so uh, Penn State gets some love. Indiana, I mean, they've looked good this year. Who, 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 who yours? Oh, oh God. Iowa. They've looked good this year. Iowa, Iowa's recovering from that uh, loss to North Dakota State. Can they rebound? No. But other than that, that's a good roundabout. Guys, top four. This should be very fun. Lyle, I'm going to kick it off to you to go first. So I've got Wisconsin at four, Nebraska at three, Michigan at two, Ohio State at one. I have the same top four. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State. Wisconsin, Nebraska, go Big Red, Ohio State, and Michigan. Uh, yeah, no. Wisconsin, Nebraska, Michigan, and Ohio State. Is that your final answer? Bringing it in, final answer. So I think pretty much all of us, except for Josh, had the same top four because I got Wisconsin, Nebraska, Michigan, Ohio State. Um, that Ohio State, Michigan could be a toss up. Nebraska, a lot of people want to know if they can go um, undefeated this year, and I guess we'll have to wait and see. But I got a very interesting, fun fact that I found this Ooh, week. Is it fun? It's, it's very fun. Ooh. All right, who wants to have some fun right now? Dibs. I want to have fun. All right, perfect. I like party. So Wisconsin is ranked. I think 10th in the country, am I right? Yes, ranked sir. number 10? Yes, they are. In their own division, they're ranked 5th. Yeah. How crazy. I, I find that just so fascinating. So you know who called them overrated? Who? I think yes, you did. I did. But yes. How about that, though? You're 10th in the country, but yet you're 5th in your own... Not, not in your own conference. In your own division It's because in your conference. No, if you look at the record, they're 4-2 and two right now, but they're 1-2 in, in conference. There are two losses, which are coming from Ohio State and Michigan. Yeah. So losing in conference games, mm-hmm. it hurts. It hurts a lot. Well, I know they're a good team. I just still find that completely that is fascinating. A, that is a fascinating. It's fact. a great stat. I was happy when I found it. Now, guys, before we uh, go on too far in the show, it is that time again. The Uni Watch. Yes. We will not choose ASUs because we do not want to be biased. But Uni Watch had us a ten last they were week, icy. which come on, they were icy white. At they least were we nice. made the list. We liked them. At least guys, we made the list. What uniform caught your eye this week? Oh, oh, uh, Josh and Brady have their hand up. Guys, rock paper scissors right now. First rock, go. Rock paper scissors. Wait, wait. You went. Shoot. Up, okay. I'm going to shoot. Rock paper scissors shoot. 
And Josh oh, is the winner. Right. Josh, who was Scissors. your favorite uniform this week? My favorite uniform was Maryland. I'm not going to say they're the best in the country, but they are without a doubt my favorite. I love their combinations. The all black, the black ops uniforms as they call them. Ooh. Absolutely mm. perfect. I loved them. Brady, since you are the loser of the game, you may go next. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. Doesn't make any sense, but I'll take it. I liked uh, Syracuse's uniforms this week, and mm. they were going with those, those light gray with the orange and... Uh, Dark blue outlines. There's some pretty cool uniforms, man. I'll tell you what, man. I'm John. I'm gonna go with. Uh, I don't know what just happened, but Spencer, okay. who is okay. your? So favorite? I was gonna go with Louisiana State's LSU's. With the for a second, I'm like, who the hell is Louisiana <laughs> State? Well, LSU, that's what they are, and they got Love the purple, purple, yellow stripes by the shoulders, and then the white helmets. Ooh, clean as can be. Mm. Lyle, I really like the Air Force uniforms this week with the gray pants. Ooh, yeah, Ooh. with the teeth. Uh, it was the gray pants, the blue jerseys, and the royal blue helmets with that gray lightning streak on the side. Nice. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, my favorite for the week, it didn't grab UniWatch's top ten. They weren't good. I. You, Jeez. Well, right. love a, you can have a nice debate in the comment section about this one. BYU's. Very clean, very classic, very original, but just something about that blue. With the white pants, the jersey, and that shiny blue Y on the helmet. Maybe because my best friend goes to BYU and I'm just being a little biased here, but I thought those uniforms were great. I can dig them. I'm doing everything I'm, I'm, like no, I'm, I'm not saying they were. I'm not saying. Okay. I, I'm not saying they were bad. I just wouldn't say they hey, were. It's the okay, nicest. man. No, no, that's your, I'm it's just, okay. Whatever. It's whatever. No, I like. No, I'm, not, the the I'm disagreeing with you, but I'm not saying that you're wrong. Hey, we need controversy on the show. What better way to spark controversy than going to the Q and A? Yeah. The good old Q and A. The the portion of the show every week where we tell you to ask us questions. And we'll try our best to answer. Gentlemen, as of right now, we have 196 comments. Holy yeah. hell. Well, I got, I got some of the best ones. That's great. Got some no, of the best ones. I got some of the best ones, too. Gentlemen, yes or no questions would be great because we can ramble on from time to time. We'll expand on the important ones. Here we go. Ones. Have you guys watched Last Chance U? I have not, but I heard it's great. I have. It is fantastic. I highly recommend it. I have not, but I really want to dig myself we into should, it. We should do that. I have not seen it. I have not seen it as well. Here's a very good one. Do you think FSU can make the New Year's Six game if they win out, or even if, if they do win, do you see them going to a lower profile bowl? They will go to a lower profile bowl, but there's no way they make it to a New Year's Six. No chance New Year's Six. They will not win out. It's not know, the question, man. Lyle. As, as, yes, it, it was. was. Yes, it, it was. was. Can so, they win out? Sorry. I can see them doing it. I can see them winning it all. And they take down Clemson. And, and the New Year's Six if they take down Clemson. Really? If the Big 12 did expand, Sad. what two teams would you guys choose to get added to the conference? And, by the way, this has grown to be one of my favorite channels on YouTube and look forward to the show every Thanks, week. Thanks, Brayden Vantasel. Thank you. Brayden, so, I'm going to quote. Like I said, just try to do this quick. Just name your two yeah. teams. Don't explain. Just name two teams you think would do well in the Big 12. We could have a whole show on this, but I'm going to say Houston without a doubt, and I'll go out on a limb, and I'll say the Boise State Broncos. Took the words right out of my mouth. Really? Yep. I, I had the exact same too. Houston yeah. Boise State. Those guys. High five. High five. Those guys need some competition. I was so. gonna say Houston and Cincinnati. Okay. I'm gonna take that high but, five back though. Oh. But I like it. Can oh, I get a high man. five? Yeah. Yeah. High I five. was honestly thinking Houston and Boise State. Hey Spencer. Right? Yeah. High five. A four-star defender recently just decommitted from Notre Dame. How bad do you think Notre Dame's record in coaching and certainties will hurt their recruiting? Lyle. Oh, good question. I mean, <laughs> evidently from that. It's hurting them already, and I think it's only going to get worse if they don't do something either about their record or about Brian Kelly. I mean, I've been saying it for the last couple weeks now. He's In the past, he screamed at his players, but somehow it worked because they were still winning games. They went 10-2 and two or whatever last year. But now it's, it's, now it's, you know, the formula's not working anymore. And, I mean, I've covered it all the last couple of weeks. I, it's it's time for him to go. It was just another loss this week for against Stanford, who's been awful this year. And what, I think what's your hashtag going to try to start bringing? Oh, well. thank you, Brady, for reminding me. You're welcome. <laughs> hashtag less is more. That's spelled L E S for less miles. <laughs> all right, so I, I'm gonna get in here again. I'm not trying to pick on you, Lyle, but I am gonna play devil's advocate advocate again. Uh, the Irish did just sign a. a, a I think it was either a three or four star just the other day. So, yes, they did have the decommit, but they did have another player uh, verbally commit. However, um, I think I think the recruiting is definitely going to decline a little bit at Notre Dame. But, again, they are one of the white-collar teams in college football. They are still going to have a strong recruiting class. Yes, they're going to skip out or they're going to miss out on a few very good recruits, but Notre Dame's still Notre Dame. 
And I do agree with you. Okay, fair. I do agree. And if anybody who is of any significance in the Notre Dame football program, if you're listening to this, sign some defensive backs. It's a joke. <laughs> that that secondary is a joke. Like I love it. Don't get, edit this rec- out. <laughs> recruit some defensive backs, please. I love it. All right, Brady, what's our next I'm question? I'm going to pose a question for you guys. Who do you think is the most underrated team in college football? I feel personally, this is from WFA Productions, by the way. I feel personally it's the great Chattanooga. Yes. They're training. They're preparing for both the Alabama <laughs> game and the playoffs. Do yes. you guys agree with them? Don't w- sleep on Chattanooga. WFA Productions, I like what you're doing over there. Yes, Chattanooga is the most underrated team in the nation, without a doubt. Good stuff, my man. All right, but the actual question I was going to ask you guys. Uh, if the Spartans keep losing games, could D'Antonio be on the hot seat? Yes. Well, I was thinking about that this week. He should I mean, be. Why not? There's I'm no reason. not on the hot seat. I'm going to say no. I would say no. I would say no as well. Right. If next year's similar, then yes. yes. Okay. Or if it starts off very similar, then yes. But as of right now, even if they keep losing this year, no. All right. Now, Josh, I'm going to give you... Lyle, get your clock out. Do get the, your clock out up right now. Let's do it. I know what it's about. I think I'm ready. Okay. That's my numbers right. cracking. Lyle, Lyle has his timer ready. I'm going to give Josh 30 seconds. Lyle, Let's go. Lyle, when I say start, you may begin. I'm going to make this a debate, and I'm just going to keep going. How will USC's tough schedule help them out in the end if they manage to win out with Sam Darnold and get to the position where they're fighting for New Year's Six Bowl? Lyle, go. You have 30 seconds. Without a doubt, if USC wins out, they will go to a New Year's Six Bowl game, or if they win the Pac-12 conference. However, USC does not have a cakewalk. They do have Washington up in Seattle. UCLA is UCLA because it's a rivalry game. They also have Notre Dame, who could pose a threat. They won't. Um, And they also have Oregon. They have Oregon at the Collie. I think USC has a very... I'd say 50-50 chance for USC to win out. If they don't, the one loss comes to the Huskies. Knock on wood, USC has a very good chance to go to a good bowl game, and they still have a chance to win the Pac-12 South. And that is 30 seconds. Josh, that was a Can I get an applause, way, please? Thank you. It may, it may sound scripted, but that was not. Yes, that was not. I was ready. I will applaud. I didn't know what the question was, though. That was Damn, on the that was, No, wow. Schaefer for president 2020? 2020? Wrong. No. <laughs> I think what's going on? Zagadol, what's going tweet. on? Zagadol, 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 Zagadol. Ladies guys, and gentlemen, um, so, 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 oh my god! So here's Gonzalez. the idea. Brady, Brady leaped out of his chair. <laughs> just tweeted, "Hey, hey, uh, Zane Gonzalez, say hey, check it out. Check out our podcast from last week. Check it out. Oh and my. you already know <laughs> Zane Gonzalez oh hit us with that favorite oh tweet. Oh my god! He hit it with the fave." All right, boys. Oh, this man. is good. This is good, everyone. This is very good. Everyone, just keep it up. Make sure you still flood his Twitter. Let him know about the show. Show him the love. I lost my train the of tweet, thought. The tweet <laughs> is also on Brady's Twitter account, which is in the link in the description. Yes. Right? yes. Wow. Also, follow me at SBX09. I will follow back. Oh, my God. But Brady scared me right there. <laughs> he leaped up. I was like, oh, no, the recording canceled. Hypothetically... If West Virginia goes undefeated, are they worth a spot in the college football playoff? I'll just answer that really quick. I feel like if you, regardless of who you are, if you go undefeated, yes, you should be deserving. Will they? We'll see. Sure. But if you go undefeated and you, you are a Power 5 conference team, you have a chance. But I'll tell you right now, they will not go undefeated. Well, well that's not the question. Same thing. If they go undefeated, are they worth a spot in the playoff? Yes. And I said yes. I said oh. yes. Technically, yeah, I, so I did. Down, didn't I? I'll say sure. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. I guess. <laughs> they, won't, they won't win out. It's not the question. Shut up, I don't care. Okay, sorry, I, I do care. Now, this guy's been trying to get a question asked for weeks, and I feel bad because we always forget about him. But the sad part is now we've actually answered both of his questions without yeah. really answering them in the podcast. <laughs> Here are some of the guy from Twitter. What's up, my man, Blake? His name is Blake, so yes. shout out to him. Do you think Boise State is legit? We kind of already touched on that. It's tough to say because of who they have played. They are undefeated, which is good. It'll all come down to that BYU game tomorrow, which when you're listening to this now, the game is going on, so we'll see about that. And what do you think about the Big 12 postponing expansion? I think it's stupid. Stupid. I need, they need to be adding teams now. Um, I think it was a terrible call on their part. So, um, well, I mean, we'll see what happens with that conference, but appreciate all the love, bro. Keep watching, keep asking, keep being you. On a scale of 9 to 10, how trash of a coach is Brian Kelly? <laughs> 10. <laughs> 11. 11. <laughs> I'm going to go with 8. Oh, whoa. I'll go with a solid 9. How about SDSU beating NDSU? And do you think the Jacks can make a run in the FCS? Love the show. I like seeing North Dakota State go down to someone. Could they make a run? 
the FCS, the only who's taken that this year, Chattanooga. So, if unfortunately, no, I will not be fearing the ear and hashtag go Jack. But, hey, props to you guys for taking out North Dakota State. Before we go to the pick em, as we do every week, we ask fans to tell which team they feel needs an extra fan. So, Spencer, who are you a fan of this week? All right, I'm going to say a multiple teams. Multiple teams. Because you had some good ones. Since I did. Week. I had some great ones. All right, I'm going to start with uh, DJ Matty B. Raps. Oh, God. And he, <laughs> he's the one who said I should be a Browns fan. Okay. So I'll be a Browns fan for that. <laughs> <laughs> that sucks. Who else? It's not going to last long. But So this <laughs> guy, um, I had a good conversation with him. His name is, his at name is LucasML3. Team from Barcelona, Spain, said I should be a Bar- Barcelona Buffalo fan. All right. Okay. So you bet I'm going to be a fan of that. Not the okay. Barcelona fan you'd think someone would tell you to be a fan of, too. True. I like it. Cooper Womack. My man. Prattville Swim League Sea Lions, and they're going to state this week in Alabama. So kudos to you, and you right. bet Good up. Good state, Good guys. Good state. And you the bet up your room for it. All right, it's a so they have team. a new fan, and good for those teams. Sea Lions. Yeah, if you still have one more. So for my last team, it's going to be from, from Legion's Highlights. And he says, I have a new team for Spencer to cheer for, and it's the Delta State Fighting Okra. So... Woohoo! What, to be honest, I don't know what an okra is. You know what an okra is? I okay. will. I will look it up. Do you know what an okra is? Or, or or it's a vegetable. Okay. No, guys, no history it. lesson now. No history lesson because the bells are ringing. Do do it. It. By the way, I know what an okra is because I'm a it's fan. a native plant of India. <laughs> I'm a fan. Yeah, the bells fan. are ringing. I do like the name though. Ding. Which no, it, once again, it's not. It's not Josh with the bell. So but those bells ring. School's over. School, unfortunately, is not over. <laughs> It is time for the pick'em. The part of the show where we all make outrageous picks and either we're right or we're wrong. There's only one one you can be. So now as always we I'm do, not looking forward to this. We at do all. We I do, am. We do oh, keep God. we do keep score of the pick'ems. Oh, and I've been leading the way the entire year so far. And I still am. Yeah, right. oh. I am I'm leading the way, but In I am tied. Ooh. With Lyle. Tied with How am I tied? I got eight out of the ten right. Because I was up by three and I got five of them right. Uh, so nice. look at the math. You do the math right there, and unfortunately you couldn't overtake me, but Lyle and I are in the lead with twenty one in I guess you could say second slash third is Spencer with Woo! eighteen. And in a nice tie for last with sixteen is Brady <laughs> and Josh. We live together! Yes, <laughs> we do. Roommate Wait, so, power. So, so it's twenty-three. No, twenty-one. Twenty-one, eighteen, and sixteen. Yes. Nice, this nice. is my week, boys, and going undefeated. No, see, now this is gonna be a it's very close. good matchup. There's it's a lot close. of there's a lot of even matchups coming up this week. Now guys, okay, originally I did not have them in the pickums. This is a game that, as the viewers are listening, is going on right now. BYU and Boise State, because I think that's going to be a very good game yes. that we did not get pick them up to. Yes. Uh, it's going to be an additional one. Who do you think wins that game? Broncos. Boise State. Boise State. <clears throat> you go first. BYU. Uh, my gut says Boise State, so I'm going to say Boise State. Oh, come on, guys. It's all going against one. It's okay. I'll, I'll, one point for me. I'll take it. Miami at Virginia Tech. Miami's been pretty sluggish the last couple games. However, I think they do bounce back this week and beat Virginia Tech. Brad Kaya, San Fernando Valley repping. Go, go Canes. Miami's fallen out of the top 25 because of their two losses. So, I'm saying, uh-huh. I'm hoping that today is their, that the game is their rebound game that they're going to win again. So, go Canes. Throw up the U. Throw up the U. Throw up the U for Brad Kaya. Brady, I got the U too. Jeez, you guys are no Again? fun all picking the same teams. We're being the... smart. Yeah, but people Maybe. don't want smart. People want exciting and fun. That's why I'm going with the Hokies at home. I'm hurt, man. Colorado at Stanford. I'm going to take this one first. And as a USC fan and an Arizona State fan, Stanford, please step up to the plate and just smack that ball. Please hit a home run this week. However, we they won't. Are we talking the same sport? They won't, and Colorado will win the game. But ASU and USC need like, Stanford what, to win RBI this game. Double or what? I, I think. 
They need a home run. No RBI doubles this week. Come on. Stanford needs to hit a home run. They need to hit a grand slam, bro. Yeah. I think, I think Colorado's going to win this one. I think Stanford's just been worse than Notre Dame. Please, Stanford. Uh, no. No, they're not worse than Notre Dame. Please, Stanford. Actually, they, yeah, they're not. They beat them. But uh, I got Colorado. It is at where? Stanford. It's at Stanford. Ooh. I'm going to take the Cardinal. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be Blake. I'm gonna be exciting, so I'm gonna take Stanford. I like that. McCaffrey probably is gonna be back this week. Stanford is at home. We all know the stat about McCaffrey and being home. That's true, we do like that. You know what? On my thing right now it says God oh, this is too tough. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Oh my god. This is too tough. Ugh. Pick one, Blake. Three. Minus three, another four. one for Blake. I'm gonna go with <coughs> Stanford at oh, home. Yes. And oh, gonna, you know what? With that, I'm going to be in last I, next I, week with, for the pick. I'm with Stanford, no, 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 no. If then I'm going to stay in last two because you know what? I am going to take Stanford in this oh, one. Oh, okay. I'm switching oh, to Stanford. Heart, if it's eh? if it's at home, I'm going to go. I, I Colorado's a good team. They're going to put up a fight. But you know what? We need Stanford to win this game as ASU fans. As USC fan, I need them to win this game. And with it being at home, I, I, oh, I like Stanford. Go. I I'm like going to go Stanford. Way to go, guys. Memphis at Navy. Navy. No. Mike Norvell, former Sun Devil offensive coordinator. I'm going Memphis. I like Navy in this game. I'm going to go uh, Memphis in this game. I'm going to have to go Navy. I like I like the split decision. Good stuff. I'm going with Memphis, though. TCU <laughs> at West Virginia. Mm, West Virginia is... Oh, boy. Undefeated. West Virginia is undefeated. At home. Yeah, but at it home. is Big 12 football, and it is Maybe. TCU. I'm going to say the Mountaineers. I still like West Virginia in this game. Mountaineers. Blake, why don't you go? <laughs> All right. Usually the host goes last, but, you know. It's okay. Shivery. It says here, I'm, I like West Virginia, what they're doing. I'm going to go with West Virginia. I'm going to go with West Virginia as well. See, I hate this when this happens when we all choose the same team. It makes Sorry. it no fun. Sorry. Arkansas at Auburn. I like Auburn in this game. I do. I mentioned that I think Arkansas is not really overrated, but I think their ranking says they're a little bit better than they actually are. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with the Tigers. I'm going with Arkansas on this one. <laughs> I like Arkansas in this game too. Going to Arkansas, Arkansas. <laughs> I'm going Auburn in this one. Wow, you're... Ole Miss at L S U, and this is at Baton Rouge. Yeah, that's what he. That's what at me. <laughs> And <laughs> well, why don't you go? You're ready. I think Ole Miss bounces back from their uh, loss last week at Arkansas. Chad Kelly will have a good game. I like Ole Miss in this game. Spencer, I'm really undecided for this one. Brady, I can, I can see either. Time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's not like I was talking or anything. I said it's... LSU was overranked, so I'm gonna say uh, <laughs> I'm gonna say Ole Miss is gonna win this one on the road. Spencer, so I'm gonna take LSU. I'm gonna go with the Tigers too at Baton Rouge. I like the Tigers. I'm going with Ole Miss. I like that one. Love you, Spencer. I like the spick. I like the picks. <laughs> Shut Spence up. Spence pick. I like the picks, Spence. Michigan State at Maryland. Maryland. Go Terps. 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 I got Maryland. Let me see those unis. Terps. Michigan State. I got Michigan State as well. I'm going to say Michigan State by at least two and a half touchdowns. Ooh, two and a half touchdowns. How 14, per, per, maybe 17, 17 points. I'm going to say that. Give or take. Texas A&M and Bama. God. Where's the game? At Bama. It's at Bama. It's at Bama. Let's go. Bama. This is a great game. It's a great game. It really is. But I think Bama just squeaks out a win. I agree with you, Lyle. Just barely. By six. Bama. Trevor Knight has done it before by playing well against the Crimson Tide. But can he do it again? Um... You see, Alabama's too good of a team for me, so I can't bet against them. So I'm going to say Crimson Tide, especially with them being at home, and that helps a lot. Okay. Brady, did you already go? I said Alabama, yeah. Well, you guys, once again, are no fun. You're picking picking the the Aggies, aren't you? I think Alabama is going to win. I'm not surprised with Texas A&M and how great they've been. 
So we all we okay. all knew what Texas A&M did a few years ago with uh, Mr. Manziel. No money, Manziel. Can it happen again? We'll see. Mo money. Manziel. But I want to have a little something on the line with this game, so I'm going to go with Texas A&M. You really taking are this game on I, the line this week. I'm not going to be balls in on this game. I'm not going to be in first next week for the pick'em anymore. Can I just point out and say that Lyle's doing math homework? <laughs> Hey, it's okay. College. We like that. Sorry, it's getting late. Sorry. Wow. You're, you're like an Asian child. You're Lyle. picking against you Alabama at home. <laughs> the worst of the worst. The game of the week where you cannot pay us or offer us any sort of exchange of any sorts, unless it's meeting Zane Gonzalez, to watch this game. Gentlemen, Miami, Ohio travels to Boeing Green. Who comes out victorious? Okay, okay. so when I was around seven or eight years old, the first strike I ever bowled was with a green bowling ball, so I'm taking bowling green in this game. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Okay, so can I no, just? No, that's, <laughs> the be- that's the best reasoning for anything Lyle's ever said. <laughs> Lyle, oh Lyle God. has the most random reasoning for things. That, is, these, that was these, the best. You still told you told me you were gonna say something like that, and it still caught me off guard. These worst of the worst things are great. Okay, so anyway. Um, as I said last week and the week before, the team that scores more points is probably going to win this game. And in that case, uh, I'm going to call out Bowling Green for saying that you have green in your name and your and green is not one of your colors. So for that reason alone, I like it. It's a bold strategy. I'm going with Bowling Green. It's a bold move. Let's see if it pays off. You see, this game kind of relates home to me because a lot of my friends have either gone to Bowling Green or Miami, Ohio. So I know a fair amount of these teams. So, I'm going to say one super good game, not against super good teams, but a good game in general. I'm going to say the Bowling Green. I knew a guy that played football at Miami of Ohio, I think, for a year or two or whatever it was. (laughs) Red Hawks. Yes, they are the Red Hawks. Good hockey team. Good hockey team. Very good hockey team. But I will tell you this. My seventh grade English teacher's fiancé, Works for Bowling Green, That's and my seventh grade English teacher now works for Bowling Green. So I gotta go for Bowling Green at Leafy. Let's go! Shout out to Brady's seventh grade English teacher's fiance, probably now husband and teacher. My high school no, well, defensive well, coach he, went to Bowling Green. He uh he was in charge of like running and creating all the graphics for like the video board. Hey, like, it's kind of a cool job. Mm-hmm. So all these pick Bowling Green. That means he's taking Miami. Well, we really okay. all pick Bowling Green. In my man. defense, I did have Miami Ohio winning this game as well, so I'm just gonna stick with my pick and go with the O. Miami. <laughs> Miami Ohio. I like it. I like it, Blake. Good pick. Oh, thank you. And mm. as always, we end the week with our fellow Sun Devils. This weekend, we welcome the Washington State Cougars for homecoming, where we'll be rocking the Sparky gear. I love it more than anything. Love it, guys. Sideline. Washington State is not a team. That should, you know, be taken too lightly. Who wins this game? And I want Josh to go first because he told me something very interesting the other day. So I have been very impressed with Arizona State's offense, except for the last three weeks. They struggled against USC. They struggled against UCLA. They got the job done. They scored when they needed to, but they did not impress me against UCLA. And they were absolutely pathetic against Colorado. The ASU secondary has been lackluster. They show up when they need to in the fourth quarter. Arizona State is a fourth quarter team. The front seven has been fairly impressive. The run game is not what it used to be. So for those reasons alone, despite in front of a homecoming crowd, despite the fact that it's a home game, despite the fact that Arizona State is a fourth quarter team, I hate to say it, I have to go with Washington State. My heart hurts. So does mine. Prove me wrong. I want to be proved wrong. It's going to be a free point. So I'm going to say Arizona State. Coming off, they're a much better home team than they are away team. They, they sure are, dude. play like... It's because of the students. Absolute disgrace when they're away. Yeah. Since it's its homecoming, a lot of player, a lot of fans, a lot of students going to be watching this game. I think we're going to show up when we need to against Washington State. ASU takes the dub. It's just another air raid offense, though. With Luke Falk, who I think is the best Luke Falk and Gabe conference. Marks. Luke Falk Gabe Marks is a name Marks. that is, needs to be recognized because oh, he yes. is a beast. Lyle. I just think that outside of those two guys and Luke Falk and Gabe Marks, that Wazza doesn't really have much else. Plus, ASU's at home. I think they can bounce back from a tough loss, so I'm going to take the Sun Devils in this game. Homecoming. 
Student section, popping. ASU's going to win this one. Short and sweet. I did like the Washington State pick. I think it'll be a good game. But then I did remember it is homecoming. So that place is going to be LIT lit. Mr. and Mrs. Harris highlights will be in attendance in the stands. Same with my parents. It's going to be my parents. even more lit. High five. High five. High five. High five. High five. High five. It's, it's going to be a very lit game. Um, I, I, I can't see ASU losing this game. I'm going to go with ASU. Now, of course, I am the only one. I'm being devil's advocate, even though the first pick was mine. So more like y'all are being Shot for advocates. how many times you've said that. I will be going Sun Devils 100%, 110%. I want to be proved wrong. The last three games have been lackluster. I know the games at home. I haven't been to Sun Devil Stadium since week four because I was working a few games, and then we had some road games. Please, prove me wrong. You have my support 100%. I just haven't seen... I just haven't seen ASU play well the last three weeks, even in a win against UCLA. Well, unfortunately, that wraps up this week's episode of the Harris Highlight Show. Already four episodes we've done, guys. It's been... That's four hours worth of podcasting. And all yeah, the stuff that we had to edit out. More than that. And all the stuff we've edited out. Well, we should have like an unrated podcast because that would be some gold right there. Hey, Lyle, what question are you on for oh. our homework? <laughs> Not far enough, but... As always, we're all on Twitter. The links will be in the bio. We love talking college football with you guys. So hit us up. If you have a team you would like Spencer and to root for, hit him up as well. Always message me. You bet. Always message him. I, I would say ladies, but here at Harris Highlights, we have a 98% male audience. <laughs> so I don't think any females are going to be messaging you anytime oh, soon. Reason. It's probably your mom and all of our moms. It's probably all of our if moms watching it. DMs from females, why do we even do this show? Because we get DMs and likes from Zane For the Gonzalez. love of the game! Yes. Zane Gonzalez added up to 37. 37. Our, um, as always, you can listen to the show on SoundCloud. That way, if you're driving to work, to school, lifting in the gym, or doing this anything Making else, a sandwich. Making a sandwich, listen I'm to the really show hungry. on SoundCloud. I'm hungry as well. SoundCloud's a hungry. great way to go. A lot of great games of college football this week. Just have a great weekend. Go team, whoever your team is. Thank you for watching. We love you all. See you next week for episode number five. Forks up, baby. Ooh, I'm in Hollywood. See, I said that. It's fine. I really thought you were all going to get in on that forks up. Forks up, baby. Forks up, anybody? Prove me wrong, Forks boys. up for Harambe. Prove me wrong. Hit it, Zane. 30 Hey, why not make it 90?